Hello, my name is Frédéric Payan. I am working at Côte d'Azur University and I am doing my research at IFRS. Today, I am going to talk about computation of Voronoi diagrams for large-scale point-based surfaces. Let me first introduce the context of this work. This work was done during the PhD of Arnaud Bletera. It was dedicated to the processing of massive point clouds, compressions, visualizations, resampling, and reconstruction. I was supervisor with Marc Antonini. With improvements of acquisition systems, the massive point clouds become more and more popular. We are now able to scan very large sites. For example, this site in Thailand covering 40,000 square meters. To obtain this data, dozens of acquisitions have been done from different points of view and then merged. This cloud contains several billion of points. Processing or just visualizing the underlying surface of such a point cloud is complex, sometimes impossible. We can give several reasons. First, point clouds are unstructured data. Then, they are huge. Many car clouds need out of core implementations. Also, the sampling distributions present strong local variations, in particular in the overlapping regions. And finally, point clouds require most of times to be resampled or simplified to make the processing easier and more accessible. It was one objective during Arnaud's. PhD. To process our point clouds, we could have used a structure based on trees, for instance, with an oak tree. Such a structure is powerful, but it doesn't process the underlying surface of the data, data. and it can be problematic with large-scale scenes containing also small elements, as we are unable to distinguish neighboring points in space and neighboring points on the surface. An emerging trend is to use graphs to connect vertices neighbored on the underlying surface. It makes many processings easier, resampling, for instance, during the work of Chen et al. The problem with the associated algorithm is that it does not support huge data. Therefore, we decided with Arnoux to propose our own structure for underlying surfaces taking advantage of graph features while being able to process massive point clouds with an out-of-core implementation. Let me now present you this new structure. Our structure is appropriate for point clouds obtained by aggregation of several scans, in particular when the data size exceeds the capacity of your machine. The core idea is to use the depth maps provided by the scanners as a parameterization domain. One local graph, GJ, is created for each scan and covers one part of the cloud. Each graph vertex in VJ is associated to a 3D point in the cloud and the edges in EJ bring a connectivity information between points describing the same element in the scene. Once each graph is created, we have to keep a structure globally consistent, so the local graphs are interconnected by matching the common points in the overlapping regions. Then, to avoid redundant operations in these regions, each pair of matched redundant points is assigned to one graph only. At the end, each set of vertices Vj of each graph is composed of two subsets, Vj plus, containing the active vertices on which the operation will be done when Gj is processed, and Vj minus, the passive vertices 
that will retrieve the results of operations made on the active vertices associated to them in other graphs. Finally, we obtain a set of interconnected and non-redundant local graphs structuring the full point cloud. This structure allows local operations and out of core algorithms. Let me introduce you now our new contribution in computation of Voronoi tessellation for 3D point clouds based on this structure. We recall that the Voronoi tessellation is the partition of a given domain constructed from a given set of sites S such that each cell, called Voronoi cell, contains the set of points closer to its sites than to any other site. To well understand our approach, I first show you how a Voronoi diagram can be computed on a point-based surface by processing the associated depth map. The workflow is actually very common. A set of sites is selected on the graph associated to this depth map, with a Poisson disk distribution for instance. Then cells are computed by region growing along the edges of the graph. And finally, centroids are computed still on the graph. Then we go back to step two until convergence. At the end, we just have a partition of the graph, which can be projective in 3D space to get the partition of the underlying surface. To generalize this concept to a set of depth maps, we investigated the partial diagram proposed in 87. Actually, a partial, partial tessellation of a subdomain M quotes can be computed without knowing the full, the full domain M containing this subdomain. By taking into account the border between M quotes and M, we can determine the global cells of the subdomain that will have exactly the same shape in the final domain. This is the case of the blue sites on this figure. It's also possible to determine partial cells in yellow here that will be updated once the full domain will be completely known. The hatchet zone is the uncertain part of the subdomain that are closer to the border of M quotes than to the yellow sites. Our main contribution today is the extension of this concept on our local graph based structure. Here is a school case in 2D with only two graphs. Two graphs. First, a partial diagram is computed on each graph by considering only the active vertices. For each graph, we obtain global cells in blue and partial cells in yellow, whose the shape is temporary, as they are connected to passive vertices hatched in blue here that must be processed by another graph. Then the graph are mutually informed that some common vertices already belongs to specific cells. See this figure. Once the information is known by each graph, it's possible to finalize the partitions in this common zone. In other words, computing the final shape of the partial cells. And finally, we obtain the global tessellation of the entire domain. Here is an illustration of our workflow on a sphere from 12 depth maps generated synthetically from 12 virtual points of view all around the object. 
On this video, we can see the 12 partial Voronoi diagrams created with our method. We can see the global cells, but also the uncertain parts that will be processed after. Here, we have the final diagram obtained after transmission of information about the partial cells and updating in the common zones. To get the centroidal tosselation, we just have to restart this algorithm several times after computing the centroids. Now, I show you more results on more complex model. First, on Armadillo. Pornoy diagram constructed from 12 virtual depth maps. The same result on Nefertiti. We can observe that these two results are pretty nice. Now, I show you a reconstruction obtained by triangulation of this diagram. It shows that it is possible to construct a pretty nice triangulation of a point-based surface while working locally. A great advantage is that the memory requirement is very low as we deal the surface locally. We don't need to store all the data in memory just the local graphs concern all along the workflow. Now, a close view of tri triangulation of meeting house, a real data containing billions of points. On the left side, the triangulation obtained from one simple Voronoi diagram created with our method And on the right side, the same triangulation improved by the relaxation after 10 iterations. As expected, the triangles are better shaped on the right figure as we tend to a centroidal diagram, iteration after iteration. The angle distribution confirmed that, confirms that observation. Now, a comparison with the technique of Polcheva and Levy, which computes local Voronoi diagrams in 3D space. The results are pretty similar, but we globally observe that our approach tends to better preserve local details as we work on the underlying surface and not in the ambient space. Same observation on meeting house. Our approach seems to better preserve local details. Now the conclusion. During this work, we have developed a new local graph-based method for computing Voronoi diagrams using the depth maps as parametrization domains. An out-of-core implementation, out implementation makes the processing of massive point clouds possible with an extremely low memory cost. For example, on Meeting House, a small peak memory peak of 3 GB is reached, whereas the cloud contains at, uh, at initially almost 500 million of points. Our first results are pretty encouraging, but our approach could be improved in the next years. The next step is to tackle the problem of non-manifold elements or alls, which occurs because of the discrete aspect of our method, and also variable sampling distributions between connected graphs. It could be achieved by checking the local Voronoi configurations 
and also including a post-processing technique filling remaining holes as in the method of Bolcheva and Levy. Thank you for your attention.